Okay. Excellent. So uh, we are delighted to be welcoming uh, Kurt and Peter from Legacy Solar Co-op today, and they will be talking about solar energy. Thanks. Thank you, Anne. Uh, appreciate the opportunity to talk with you folks um, through the ED Lock Public Library. Um, we are not too far away from you right now. I'm in Madison and uh, Peter is closer to Monona. So we're just, just up uh, just north of you here in Dane County. Legacy Solar Co-op, however, is a statewide organization. So uh, let me show my screen so I can go through our little slide presentation and then um, you know, there'll be, there'll be a chance for questions uh, along the way or at the end. So I gotta hit this button and then I gotta hit that button. Okay, very good. So, so really what we got today is introduction to solar. And when we talk about solar, it's solar photovoltaics, that's solar electric, as opposed to solar thermal, which is uh, quite simply just the uh, warming of, of water uh, using the sun's energy. Whereas what we traditionally now talk about, or more, more commonly talk about with solar is um, solar electricity. And so we'll get into that. So introductions, my name uh, is, is Kurt Reinhold. I'm the president and one of the founders of the Legacy Solar Wisconsin Cooperative, which is our, our, our full legal name. Uh, we, we do business as Legacy Solar Co-op or LSC. And I've been um, uh, kind of captain of the ship, so to speak, for, for as long as we've been in existence, 2014. And my cohort who is with me today, uh, Peter Fiala, is also a director, uh, a board of director, and he's also the coordinator for the Group I program. And Peter will uh, talk with us in just a moment and share uh, a little description of, of, of what is the Legacy Solar Co-op. And then I'll uh, pick it up again, talk about the origin story of the co-op, but then uh, move right into um, an introduction to solar energy. So Peter, you want to take, take it away? Yes, my name is Peter Peter Fiala, as it said on there um, on the board, and I'm also the Solar Group by coordinator, and I've, I've been with the co-op since I believe 2017. Um, started off doing marketing and website, and now I'm doing this project, the uh, Solar Group by project. So what is so Legacy Solar Co-op? Um, it is a statewide organization. Um, we have members um, a lot in Dane County, but also up north uh, in the center of the state. We've we've done projects as far north as we're working on one in Bayfield. Um, we've done some in Milwaukee and Dane County and elsewhere. Um, basically, we are growing solar in Wisconsin, where we're member owned. Um, you can become a member, an institution can become a member. And we talk to people about, you guessed it, solar energy and energy efficiency. Um, and our goal is to bring people and communities together to support local and statewide and in solar initiatives. Um, what's the, what are the benefits of membership? Um, you receive discounts on consulting you can buy bonds and you some people join just to generally support the solar movement in Wisconsin. Um, the first first thing on the list there or second thing on the list there is uh, solar energy, solar renewable energy credits, also known as RECs. And the concept of that you might be familiar with that concept of through your own utility, they might offer something similar where you can buy credits from a larger scale solar or wind project, and then you get to call your energy green, um, that you're supporting the green energy movement. Uh, ours is similar, although it is on a much smaller scale and you, we can actually point to where your energy comes from, which building. Uh, so it's very tangible like that. Um, solar group buys is what I spend 99.9% .9 of my time on. Um, it is a program that is set up in an area for a limited time. So a county could be set up in a company even. 
um, we work with an installer to bring down the costs and keep um, quality high, uh, the quality pro products high. And that's for residents, businesses, and nonprofits up to a certain point uh, size. Um, tax financing, uh, which is Kurt's expertise, and entities can um, have significant savings um, um, on upfront costs and overall costs. And really, it could make or break uh, a solar project. Um, it's it's a way we've helped over 30 community institutions go solar with, with minimal upfront costs. Um, and then solar bonds are a chance for uh, you members to support community projects across the state. It could be a project of your choice or it could be just um, letting us choose which project you are helping realize. And I'll turn it over to Kurt for origin story of co-op. All right, well, thank you, Peter. Um, like I said, we haven't been around a heck of a long time, but we've been around since 2014. But how did we come to be in, in existence in the first place? Well, uh, I started in 2011 and then in 2012 um, with a way for multiple stakeholders in a community, a neighborhood or a township to figure out how you could support solar kind of in the commons, whether that's um, on, a, on a building or in a park or on a church, a library, a school. And so the first model that we came up with was the peer-to-peer -peer model. Basically, you just find um, a few people who want to support solar, but they can't put it on their own house for whatever reason. And then they can make a loan to someone in the neighborhood, we call it the friends and neighbors financing that was back in 2012. So we would just have individual loans to a, a household who could use the solar on their roof to reduce their energy bills and the, the savings from the reduced energy bills would go to pay back the loan. So basically pay as you go. And uh, those, allowed us to put solar on, on roofs that were favorable with lots of sunlight, whereas other people have roofs that have too much shading or maybe they live in an apartment or a condo and it's just really hard to do solar on their own. So this was a way for people to vicariously, but then financially, you know, have an impact and promote solar in their neighborhoods and communities. So that was, that started in 2012. Uh, we institutionalized it by, uh, rather than doing one-offs, we decided if we became a co-op in the entire state of Wisconsin, now we can ask folks who want to support solar projects in their communities or other communities in Wisconsin, we could ask those folks to participate and they can participate in, in different, different ways. One of the ways is to buy solar bonds. Uh, other ways is to be an internal champion of a church, a library, or school, and, and kind of help with the uh, assessment and help with the decision making and educating the, the folks who are part of that organization to sign on to doing solar and commit to doing solar. So in 2014, we formed a co-op. It allowed us to have more democratization. That's, that's, that's a mouthful of a word, but the democratization of solar investing meant that um, anybody, uh, as long as you had $250 and you were a member of the co-op and, and a resident of the state of Wisconsin, you could buy a slice of sun solar bonds. So it really opened up the um, availability to investing and supporting solar, but also at a lower cost. And we helped lots of community institutions, like Peter said, over 30 so far. And then uh, in recent years, we started to develop the SREC program, which is uh, um, the switch to solar, which is a green energy. And it's kind of like an offset um, or, you know, your carbon footprint um, can be countered by buying solar power that is only counted once for each kilowatt hour uh, from participating projects. And then we develop residential solar programs. So even in McFarland right now, uh, you know, you could take advantage of, of that which is a solar group buy. Um, 
talk a little bit more about that in the in a minute. So legacy solar co-op projects. So we've done over 30 all around the state of Wisconsin. Um, small, medium, large. I think the smallest is maybe three kilowatts that we've done. The largest uh, over 750 kilowatts uh, for a school. Now, um, oh, that was in the first 10 minutes. Not so bad. Uh, we'll talk a little bit more about how you can take advantage of opportunities around the state or even in your own backyard or on your own roof. But let me now give you a little bit of an introduction to solar technology and the terms. So a solar cell is, is simply, you've seen pictures of, and you'll see a picture in a minute, but this is kind of on the micro level. The cell itself is really only about, you know, four or five inches square and it's comprised of a sandwiching of, of glass and silicon layers that have uh, the ability to um, be charged. One is charged positively, the other is charged negatively. But then when you have a photon striking the, the first layer, it can dislodge an electron and cause a flip in the uh, a flip in the charge, and that flip in charge is captured in these conductor strips on the surface, so the electron can flow, and then it goes all the way through the circuit and then back around to the negative side. So it's kind of like a, a a a source. You think of it in your house. You've got a You've got water that comes in, you use the water and then it goes down the drain and then it's kind of, you know, goes back into the water table. So, um, so this is, this is a solar cell. That's what we refer to as a cell, but then a panel or a solar panel is all also known as a module could have 60 cells, 72 cells, or even 96 cells in each panel or each module. So that's what, we refer to as a solar module. And you're probably, you've probably seen different versions or different looks. Some of them um, have have a, a matrix, a line, you know, you can see the lines clearly. Others, it's a little bit more muted. It's a darker color and uh, others can be even blue. So blue and black and gray, you know, these are, are kind of traditional colors. Um, the per percentage of the sunlight that strikes onto each module and is converted into electricity is somewhere between 16% up to about 22%. Um, the, lower, the lower ratings are usually for, for polycrystalline cells and the higher ratings are usually for monocrystalline cells. Uh, no big deal. You don't need to know that much about it. But but uh, compared to a leaf, which you know, a leaf of a tree uses photosynthesis to create energy, and a leaf will convert about three percent of that sunlight into usable energy. So uh, solar panels and electricity are much more efficient than a leaf, but um, also uh, a little bit more expensive to, to make than, than planting a tree. So uh, we were able to do that. The solar array, so you have a cell and then a panel and then the array. So the array is many, many solar panels, in, usually in a rectangular format, but here it can follow the contours of the roof. So you've got different surfaces uh, on which you can have several in a row, and then you could have several rows and usually you have to have a little space. You can see the white between the rows here. You have to have a little space between the rows so that when the sun is at its normal angle throughout the year, it's not going to cast a shadow on the solar panel behind it and the row behind it. And so that's why you know they're not tightly formed here because these solar panels are actually tipped up a little bit. They're not flat. If we were at closer to the equator, they'd be flat. But we're north of the equator, and so we usually have, you know, 10, 20, 30, 40 degree pitch uh, in that in order to, to capture the sun at a more advantageous angle. So 
Um, there's more or less you know, space between the rows, but that's an array. So we have the solar cell, the solar panel, solar array. Next up, we have the solar inverter. And what does an inverter do? Well, I didn't mention it earlier, but the solar cell, the basic uh, science be behind it is that it creates direct current electricity because it just pushes electrons through that circuit. We don't use direct current electricity in our homes except where we might use batteries like a flashlight or a radio or something that could run on DC current. So we need an inverter to convert that DC or direct current electricity into AC alternating current electricity at 60 Hertz. So it goes back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, 60 times a second. That is what an inverter does. And so this is uh, one of our tax sponsors and, and local renewable energy advocates uh, who's been basically the founder of Renew Wisconsin. So this is Don, and this is a project that he was involved with and he's turning on, flipping the switch to these inverters, the Fronius inverters. Another term in the solar vocabulary is grid tied. So what does grid tied mean? I think you know what it means. Basically, you know, your power is coming from far away, the, the power plant, and it's being conveyed along the uh, cables and lines. And it's actually being converted by a transformer from a high voltage down to a lower voltage. And then your, your household is probably has 110 volt. Um, you can double up those, those lines and you can inside of your house if you need 220 volt to run a, a dryer or a, a car charger or something like that, you can have 220 volt. Uh, but very few homes have three phase power, which, which would be a, you know, a different voltage. But that's, uh, that's grid tied. The opposite of grid tied would be off grid, right? And off grid would be where you have um, just a battery that is collecting the solar power during the day and then feeding it back to your house whenever you need it. This picture, however, is showing a, a, a hybrid connection between a grid tied and a battery system. So this is a hybrid uh, grid tied plus you can operate independent of the grid uh, when or if you need to, but this is a, a very efficient way to do it. It's a little bit more, it's a lot more expensive than, than just being grid tied, but it allows you to have efficiencies of scale and use your power and have more resiliency in the event of a power outage where grid power is not available. So that's just some of the terms, some of the background, kind of how it all fits together. Um, roof mounts are, are, the, are the most popular way to have solar privately owned for your home. And so you see here on, on a barn, you see here on a multi-story um, household you see here on a garage on the you know the side of the garage um, these are all you know facing south or maybe southwest or southeast sometimes you can go due east and due west but you do not really want to be facing north because the sun uh, especially in our at our latitude is is usually going to be um, more efficient uh, on the solar side to have it facing more south. Uh, the other form of mounting your solar array would be a ground mount array. And so you could have a ground mount array um, as long as it's within about you know, 200, really no more than 300 feet away from your, from your service panel, um, you can usually make that work. And so it could be up on a hill, it could be up in, in, in a field, where there's more open space uh, rather than being um, nestled behind trees where the trees are on the south side. Here in the upper right-hand corner, this picture, the trees are actually on the north side of the solar array. So they don't interfere or cast any shadow uh, except in the rare cases where in the long, long days of summer where the, where the sun comes up actually a little bit north of, of the Eastern horizon. So there may be a tiny bit of, of, sh of shade at 6 or 7 a.m., but for the most part, um, trees like this behind an array are not going to be a problem. 
and you can see the various settings here. So um, as far as why would someone want to go solar, everybody's got their own reason. Maybe you got multiple reasons. Uh, it could be that you are interested in a sustainable energy system in our society. It could be that you're just wanting to save on your electric bills and reduce your dependence on fossil fuels. Uh, it could be that you want to increase the value of your home, your property. A uh, little side note on that, in the state of Wisconsin, if you do buy into solar and put solar on your house or on your business, it uh, will raise the value of your home or business, but it will not raise your property taxes. So that's an exemption that solar energy uh, enjoys in the Wisconsin state statutes or in the IRS or the uh, Wisconsin state revenue code is that you can, you can be um, uh, enjoying a higher property value, but you do not have to pay that additional property tax. So lots of reasons to go solar, but, but really what we talk about is, you know, if you're, if you're wanting to go solar, the best thing you want to do is you want, you want value, right? You want low cost, you want high quality. And so that's what the group buy does. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just go over a couple of these um, slides because we don't have time to go over all of this right now. But but really, if you join us with the, the group buy program, what we would do is, is look at your particular needs. And so I'll just go right into the current offerings. Oh, I didn't mean to start over. Sorry about that, folks. This will just take a second. Okay, current offerings, all right. So uh, with the Dane County Group Buy, I'll just spend a minute on this just so you can understand what's going on. Uh, this summer, we're still doing the solar group buy through the end of the summer. It's the lowest cost uh, of solar in the county. Uh, it's about mid to $2, $2.50, $2.60 per watt. Uh, it will be going up uh, uh, very shortly though because there is some inflation and um, some issues with with the uh, supply line and and availability of panels. But but really, this is still a good time to get into solar. This is the lowest cost ever that we've ever seen over the years, in my estimation. Uh, we've got two really outstanding, long-standing, outstanding local vendors in 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 full spectrum solar out of Madison and Midwest Solar Power. Also out of Madison, they service the entire. Dane County area, plus they go, I think, within uh, 90 minutes of, of Madison. Also, with the, great, with the Group Buy program, Legacy Solar Co-op has formed a new strategic relationship with Green Penny. Green Penny is an online bank that supports investments in renewable energy technology, but also energy efficiency. So you can get a solar loan through Green Penny at a low rate and have those payments stretched out as long as 12 years so that you can actually, if you put some money down and you have a, a, a good um, a good priced system, you can usually have, you know, come out ahead in just the first few years with regard to the return on investment. But of course, a solar array is going to be on your house for decades and it has a 25 year, the, the um, solar panels have a 25 year manufacturer and production warranty, as well as the inverters have at least a 10 year warranty. So, um, you're, you know, you're looking at maybe replacing the inverters once or twice over, over the next 30 years. And um, so you're going to have lots of, of, of good payback. If you're interested in our Dane, Dane County group buy, you can get a hold of Peter at LegacySolarCoop.org. Um, I'll just mention, uh, maybe, is there something else, Peter, that we should mention regarding the uh, group buy before I move on to the slice of sun? No, I think you captured it pretty well. Oh, okay. And I think we'll, you know, we'll stop for questions in a minute, but the slice of sun, SOS, uh, co-op member bonds, what is that now? So you might have mentioned, or remember me mentioning earlier that we offer tax financing to churches, libraries, schools, other nonprofits 
that want to go solar, but they don't, they can't use a tax credit on their own. So they have to partner with a tax sponsor, could be an individual, could be a company. And then the co-op helps to bring um, additional financing or funding available. And we will make a loan to the tax sponsor. Uh, if you're interested in becoming a member of the co-op and buying bonds, you can buy them in $250 increments. Uh, the only two requirements, however, are that you must be a member of our co-op, meaning that you're an owner, you're an owner of the co-op. Um, individual membership is $100 for a lifetime membership for your household. Or if you're an organization or a business, you can become a member for $250. That's a one-time payment. Also, the second requirement for the, the bond program is that you must be a resident of the state of Wisconsin. That is for securities um, issue re regarding the um, sale of uh, something that could be considered a security, that would be a bond or an investment vehicle. But because you're an owner of the co-op, you're one of the owners of the co-op, that's not a public offering, this is a private offering. But that exemption from federal securities regulatory authority um, depends on us only offering these bonds to members of the co-op who are residents of Wisconsin. So you can't be a resident of Illinois or a resident of Minnesota and be a member of the co-op and buy bonds because that would negate our uh, intrastate uh, securities law exemption. So, so those are the two requirements. You can earn up to 3.25% over six to 12 years. And so that's that. The, the other offering that we have currently is, uh, you mentioned we mentioned earlier, is called the Switch to Solar program. This is the SREX subscription. And the nice thing about SREX is that, you know, it, they're, they're inexpensive to offset or to, to counter your carbon footprint. Uh, you can do that for your home and personal use, meaning if you have uh, an electric bill that is generally, you know, 500 kilowatt hours a month, we can easily offset, or you can easily offset your carbon footprint with solar just by paying a couple of pennies per kilowatt hour. And this is a statewide program. We'll show you where your solar came from and what year it was generated. And uh, another way that you can counter your footprint is through your travel. So if you take a trip and you drive a long distance and you have a 30 mile an hour, 30 mile per gallon, 30 miles an hour would be a slow trip, uh, 30 miles per gallon uh, automobile, you know, we know roughly how many pounds or tons of CO2 that you will be emitting into the air for your trip. And, and you can offset that by buying uh, solar offsets. So one REC, one solar renewable energy certificate is equivalent to a thousand kilowatt hours of Wisconsin solar. And just so that you understand this, one kilowatt hour of solar will displace precise, almost uh, equivalent to one pound of coal that your power plant will burn in order to uh, 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 create electricity. It, it, it'll offset a pound of coal and the pollution that comes with burning that coal. So if you'd rather use solar, a clean fuel than coal in Wisconsin, uh, and, you, and if you can't put solar on your own house at this point, you can easily subscribe to the S2S program. There's a lot of transparency with this. We track every single kilowatt hour of solar and every single kilowatt hour of RECs that is purchased from our, our members. And so there's no double dipping. It's transparent and, um, and verifiable. Okay, that's the end of the formal part of our presentation. And it looks like, um, I think we did it, 29 minutes, pretty good. Um, so again, if you want to reach out to us, you can go to our website to learn more about us at Legacy Solar Co-op, Co and there's no hyphen in the middle of that. It's just Legacy Solar Coop, 
org, or you can email our general email is at info at legacy solar co op dot org, or you, if you want to get a hold of Peter for the group by, uh, you can get a hold of him at surprise, surprise, Peter at legacy solar co op dot org. So that's our presentation, Anne, and thank you so much, and thank you. Um, participants. I, I don't know who all is with us right now, but thank you for, for joining us today. Any questions at all? I just wanted to bring up one thing while questions are being thought of, um, is that the over the past, more recently in less than a decade, uh, I think the accessibility of solar has really come down within reach of a lot of people, as you can see that if you can't afford uh, an entire solar system that that generates 100% of your electricity from for your energy use, you can simply um, subscribe to a carbon offset program. So it takes it from a potentially large cost long term um, to a, a monthly cost that you can afford now. So, and all the way up to, like Kurt said, a 750 kW system. That's, you know, systems get quite large. So what we're offering is a variety of options that people can get involved in. And then uh, efficiency is getting better uh, over time. So costs are coming down, efficiency is getting better. Things are getting more accessible. So it's, it's the perfect time to Really to get involved in yeah and and i would say um according to the pricing uh it has gotten more efficient in recent years especially with the advent of a thing called bifacial panels that's a solar panel that will create electricity from the top surface like like always but now they put some some solar cells on the back surface so surface so that if it bounces off of the snow in the winter it can it can um, also generate electricity on the bottom. So, so that is really the, the main uh, technological improvement recently. There really isn't going to be uh, much more um, giant leaps for man or mankind with regard to solar technology. So this is the time to get in because the prices have really never been lower, although they will uh, start to creep up. Um, and I'm not sure for how long those prices will creep up uh, you know, because of inflation, but we're hoping that inflation is just a temporary phenomenon um, after this, you know, pandemic that we've in our world economy has has uh, has dealt with uh, recently. So, thank you, Anne. Any um, any questions by you or any of our guests? Um, I don't see any questions that have come in. So I, I think we can probably wrap it up. But I want to thank you okay. so much for all this wonderful information and for being here today. Oh. Our pleasure. So thanks, thanks a lot. Hope to hope to meet any one of you uh, soon in the near future. And Excellent. Take care, everybody. Bye. Take care. Bye. Bye.